Y'all seem to love the zero overall rebuilds. So today, we are bringing back a channel classic from quite a few months ago. And we are gonna be rebuilding this zero overall team with every first round pick, or at least as many as EA will allow me to get. And we are gonna see how good we can make this team over the next few seasons. And I wanna make this a long one. I wanna turn this into one of the best rosters in the league by the end of this. So get a drink, get a snack, get whatever, get your Carson Strong body pillows. We're in for a good one today. But the reason we are doing this is because we once again very easily hit a like goal, which thank you all so much for. I, I appreciate it. And I said I would do another zero overall rebuild. So that's what we're doing. So let's go for the highest like goal I've ever set. Let's see if we can hit 3,500 likes. If we hit that, I have another, arguably more chaotic zero overall rebuild planned. Only if we hit that like goal though, because it'll let me know that y'all actually want to see it. So again, 3,500 likes. If there's anything I could ever ask you to do, it's just that. I would appreciate it. And also subscribe for more. I'm trying to hit 40k in the next week or so. Trying to hit 50k by the end of the month. So if you know anyone that likes Madden Rebuilds, be sure to share the channel with them. Because rebuilds are literally all I do. I have no life. And because I'm gonna do a zero overall rebuild once we hit that like goal, let me know any fun zero overall rebuild ideas you have down below. If there's any crazy concept you can come up with, let me know. But enough yapping. Let's get into more yapping. Actually, a little bit, <laughs> a little bit of a tiny yapping moment here. So I was originally going to do this a couple days ago, and I was going to use Carson Strong as the quarterback because I thought he was really underrated. He was very good at Nevada before really unfortunate injuries. Literally the day I was going to do this rebuild, he retired. He announced his retirement on Twitter. I was like, you know what? I want to use some fun players for this. What are some players that I like? <laughs> Carson Strong was who I came up with, and he retired that day. So he would have been a first round pick if not for knee injuries, by the way. He had a hell of an arm. Okay, enough yapping. Let's get to the end of the season. We'll see how badly we get blown out in every game. Okay, well, thankfully, we don't win a game with this team. We go 0-17, as we should. We put up points on offense somehow. We allowed 73.4 points per game on defense. Not ideal. Carson Strong, I've, I've seen worse. 600 yards, no touchdowns, 22 picks. I've seen worse. I'm not gonna go through all these and talk about... Well, I'll, I'll show all these. Y'all have seen a zero overall team though. 174 tackles. Hmm. I'm surprised players can even tackle with zero tackling, but whatever. So yeah, clearly not great stuff there. But let's get into the good part, the off season. And honestly, I'm just going to do this how I would do a normal realistic rebuild. I'm going to sign whoever I want. There won't be any limitations really with building this team at all. Oh, but big shocker there for the Super Bowl. Cowboys Chiefs. Cool. The same one every every season. <laughs> Obviously, we won't resign anyone, although it is tempting. But now the rebuild begins. It looks like we signed some practice squad players too, I guess. Cool. Ooh, Andre Bachelia. We're, we're cooking now. I don't even know who this is. Oh, Brandon Smith. I forgot he existed. James Wiggins, Anthony Orgy. I'll keep Anthony Orgy because funny last name and I'm immature. Oh, wait, wait. We got Anthony Orgy and Jabril Cox. Dude, that's hilarious. That's awesome. I'm laughing so hard right now. Uh, let's see who's available in free agency. Oh, uh, some pretty good players. Chase Young, bring him back to the commanders. He's usually decent in this game sometimes. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe not. Okay, well, let me look through here and we will see who we want to sign. Definitely want Chris Jones though, if possible. Okay, we're gonna go, I was gonna say light. <laughs> I would say going after Chris Jones, Tyron Smith, and Chase Young isn't necessarily light in free agency. It's just not as many players as I thought I was gonna go for, but these would be three huge additions. I don't know how Chase Young plays in this game, but at least he's a good overall player, and that's more what I'm worried about here. Tyron Smith is definitely older, but I'm I'm fine with an older left tackle as long as he's good. I think we can get him. I think we can get Chase Young. The problem is the Lions also really want Chris Jones, which would be horrifying. I, I hope that doesn't happen. That would be a scary defense. I get, well, they still need corners, but still. I was going to go for a few more players like Gabe Davis, but honestly, we can probably just draft players that will be better than him by the end of the season. Like, there wouldn't really be a point in paying a player we can, when we can just draft one that would be better. So, this is all we're gonna do. Let's see if these three want to sign. My guess is we get Smith and Young, but we don't get Chris Jones. If we don't get Chris Jones, I have a plan. They all sign, and that's exactly what happens. So, assuming he is still available, Christian Wilkins? I mean, that's not a bad compromise. We're really the only team that's interested. So, Christian Wilkins, do you want to sign? And he does. So, not the original three that I wanted, but almost just as good. 
good. So now we have a baseline set for this team, and let's get to the draft. This should be fun. Oh god, I'm gonna have to trade up for these picks. Okay, if you don't know, I think the limit is 25 draft picks for a year you can have. Is that a thing in real life? I mean, it'd be weird to go crazy like that for draft picks, but is there a draft pick limit in real life per season? I don't know. I don't know why it's a thing in Madden, but let me get these picks. I'll find a way. Okay, well that took way longer than I thought, but we at least have every top five pick now, I think. And who are we gonna make the number one pick? Daryl Rivers, whoa. What's your, whoa. Uh, this might be the best corner I've ever seen. <laughs> 424 speed, 19 bench reps, A, awareness, man coverage, press, zone coverage, even tackle, hit power, catching, like he's a really good run defender, and I guess catcher. Yeah, this is the best corner prospect I've ever seen. He doesn't have the best jumping in the world, but but I, I don't care. He's 23 with, if this dude was like 20 or even 21, he would be a 99 overall by the end of year two. But uh, yeah, you're gonna be the number one pick. Daryl Rivers out of Penn State or Darrell, I don't know. Welcome to the team. Hidden Dev, 97 speed. Borderline should be 99 and only 93 Excel with a 424. That's kind of weird, but hey, we'll take it. Now let's see, do I wanna take a QB yet or are we gonna wait? I mean, we might as well get our QB of the future here. Joey Fowler, elite throw power, lots of A ratings, especially for, you know, important stats. His break sack isn't great, but I don't know if I care. Again, another 23-year-old, which is a little tough, but it doesn't really matter. Well, it does, but I don't care. Also, Texas Tech, is this is this Patrick Mahomes? Maybe. Uh, I sure hope he has a dev trait. A lot of quarterbacks I've been taking early that look really good don't have a dev trait, but let's take him. <sighs> Well, <laughs> that's tough. You know what? We're pretty much just going straight down the board. Ben Greenberry looks really good too. The strength isn't the best, but everything else is, or close to the best. Elite change of direction, agility, and acceleration. Great speed, good jumping. The ratings are all really good. Another guy that could have normal development. Sometimes bad injury and good discipline pairs to make normal dev. That's what it seems like. I don't know. Let's take him. Okay, he has hidden. Only 79 strength, but 84 speed, 88 excel, 86 agility. Yeah, that sounds good. I don't know how many more picks I'm going to show. I don't want to be here for the rest of time or keep y'all here for the rest of time, but at least a couple more. Let's look for a good receiver. Okay, none of the receivers look absolutely insane. I think the two best are the top two in Randall Sawyer, who doesn't have the best speed in the world, but everything else looks good other than, I guess, the deep route. And then Brian Rogers, who's a little quicker, has elite change of direction. Not the best release, though. I think he might be better. Maybe. We'll take both. We'll start with Brian. Rogers, hidden dev, pretty good speed, 95 change of direction. And Randall Sawyer, very good jumping, elite jumping, also a few A ratings. I don't think either of these receivers are going to be insane, but I think they're good, so let's go with Randall Sawyer. Another hidden dev, 97 jumping, 93 excel. This dude's kind of crazy, too. We'll see. We'll see who's better out of those two. God, I'm going to have to trade up for more picks. No. <laughs> Why? I think I found a generational safety. I might have found two. Well, Amani Silvers looks good. Or Amari Silvers, but Cal Batch out of Penn State. You know, I wouldn't recommend taking safety top five, but it doesn't really matter. We're gonna have every first round pick or at least as many as we can get. But 438 speed, 18 bench reps, good vertical ju or great jumping, elite change direction, A, play rack, pursuit, hit power, tackle, potentially A, awareness, hopefully B, zone coverage. The only thing that holds him back is he isn't insane in coverage. It looks like he has good coverage, but he's listed as a hybrid and only as B man, so I'm like, maybe he isn't as good as I think, but I mean, 438 speed with those ratings is insane. I wouldn't be stunned if he has normal dev, but let's take him. Okay, he has hidden 94 speed, only 90 XL. He'll probably be around an 80 ish, but okay, that's the last pick I'll show. All, oh, there are even more I have to trade up for. Okay, I'm gonna be here for about two hours, but wish me luck. We'll see how we did. Okay, well, we made it through the draft, and this was a very, very interesting one. There weren't as many generational looking players as I expected, but maybe some players are better than I thought they would be. Okay, Darrell, R I should have predicted overalls. I should have to just uh, inflate my ego. You know what I'm saying? But uh, <laughs> Daryl Rivers, Darrell Rivers, whatever his name is, 85 overall, which is exactly what I thought he would be. 97 speed, 86 man, 81 zone, 85 press as a rookie is insane. 82 catching for a corner? Now, out of curiosity, obviously we're not going to do this. Well, he's a 50 
53 at receiver, which is borderline roster making caliber. I guess not really, but it's interesting. Joey Fowler is only a 77, but I'm not going to spend much time on him because I don't think he's going to be our QB because of the normal dev. The second highest overall player we got was Ben Greenberry at an 82. So the lack of block shedding definitely didn't matter because he has 89 finesse moves as a rookie before ever playing a snap in the NFL. He's already one of the better pass rushers in the league. That's crazy. <laughs> Brian Rogers was the better of the two receivers by one overall 79. Sawyer's a 78. Cal Batch is an 80 overall. I guess I was right about that. And yeah, his coverage isn't insane or anything, but it's good. Not the best block shedding, but I don't really care. Some of these next couple picks were a little questionable, but Andrew Woodard, really good corner. He had hidden dev, some decent linebackers, and our starting quarterback, I think, is going to be Lance Springs, who does actually have a dev trait. 97 throw power. Not as good of an overall as Fowler, but I'm gonna definitely prioritize the dev trait. I accidentally sim this pick. The CPU picked a decent running back. Does he have a dev trait? I haven't seen yet. He does. So he'll probably start. Amari Silvers, I did take him. He's good. The defensive tackle class was kind of weak. This guard's pretty good. The center isn't great. This t the It was a very weak tight end class too, but decent linebacker, good corner, good guard, another running back. So overall, we definitely took the better players earlier. And I want to see if there's anyone we missed out on. It is very possible. Oh, Todd Gunter for the Dolphins is really good. I, I probably just didn't get to him when I was looking for guards because he didn't go until the end of the second round, but he is very good. This linebacker, Brian Hawkins, also a second round pick, another guard. But overall, I mean, other than guards, it looks like we pretty much got everyone. So let's get into year two. I guess year one, depending on how you want to look at it. We'll call it year two and let's see how the team's looking. Okay, well, Brian Rogers is mentoring Randall Sawyer, which I I don't get because they're both rookies, but we'll take the 10. I thought I picked dev trait increase, not XP. Wait, no, I swear I picked the dev trait increase. Whatever, that's fine. Or wait, it, what, what's this? <laughs> this is another one, improve rookie. What's this one gonna be? And is it gonna be another rookie mentoring? Oh no, it's Tyron Smith. Okay, good. I guess we'll go pass block finesse because I think that's our scheme. I don't know, sure. But here's how the team's looking heading into year two. Literally all rookies on offense, I guess, other than Tyron Smith and I guess Brevin Jordan, but he won't play much at all. <laughs> like I said, we're gonna go with Springs at QB because of the hidden dev. I wish we could transfer whatever his dev trade is over to Fowler, but we can't exactly do that. I mean, I guess I could, but like that would that would be cheating. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Our O-line is really good, has a ton of potential. Our receiving core is already pretty good. Our running back group, we're probably gonna need to sign a running back because Madden generated running backs just never do well in this game. I don't know what it is about them. And then our defense also looks very nice. Obviously, Chase Young and Christian Wilkins aren't rookies, but the rest of the team is. Insane corner group already. Insane D-line. I mean, our D-line is an average of what? 84? 85? Like an 84, and two of them are rookies. This team is already loaded, and it's all rookies, <laughs> other than three players. I mean, I say loaded. We're only an 81 overall, but by the end of the year, it should be much better. So speaking of that, let's get to the midseason point, and we'll see how the team's coming along. I don't think our record will be very good this year. I want to say that because, you know, it's a bunch of rookies, but I guess you never know. My guess is two and five. Got me a box of a uh, Panini mosaic cards. It was like 35 bucks for like 36 cards. Let's hope these are good. I don't know. But at the midseason point of year one, we are four and two. Why? <laughs> We're only an 81 overall. Why are we four and two? I mean, I'll take it. Okay, we got destroyed by the Cowboys and we lost to the Giants, but then we destroyed the Bears right after that. This is a weird schedule. We dumpstered the Browns in the first game of the year, which I saw that already. <laughs> Interesting schedule. We already have 21 re- Oh, this is just gonna be backups. Never mind. I was like, how? Okay, I'll worry about these guys if I have to. I don't know. We're gonna have a ton of draft picks this year, so I probably don't even have to re-sign any of those backups. We'll see. But that's really all there is for us to do here. Despite being four and two, we're only third in the division, though. <laughs> all of our division has a winning record. The Cowboys are five and one. The Eagles are five and two. We are four and two. And the Giants are four and three. So we could win the division. We could be last in the division by the end of the year. I have no idea. My guess is we finish somewhere around like eight and nine, nine and eight. But anyways, yapping again. I'm sorry. 
sorry. Let's get to the end of the year. We'll see what happens. Okay, well, we actually do end up being pretty good. We had we had one of the best run Ds at the midseason, and now we have number 24, so I don't want to know what happened there in the second half of the year, but we finished with an alright offense and an alright defense, which I'm fine with because we don't have the best roster in the world yet. But I already saw some of the season stats. They are interesting. I guess maybe interesting is the wrong word. I uh, you'll see. So Lance Springs was all right, 3,900 yards, 27 touchdowns. The interceptions are a little high, but everything overall is good. I have no idea who's going to win Rookie of the Year. I'm hoping it'll be one of our players. Honestly, I don't think so. <laughs> Adrian Vaughn was honestly better than I thought he would be. Almost 1,000 yards, only 3.6 yards per carry, which is honestly even better than I expected in 10 touchdowns. Randall Sawyer was our best receiver with 1,000 yards, 8 touchdowns. Lynn Garner, almost 1,000 yards. Hmm, scary season for Chad Irons there. 10 touchdowns, though. On offense, or in terms of blocking, it was all right. Nothing insane. Tyron Smith was pretty bad, actually, and Eric Lucas wasn't great, but Jalen Felton was very good at right tackle. The reason I said it was interesting, especially on offense, is there was absolutely nobody who had, like, an outstanding season. No standouts. Everything was just fine. It was like, okay, cool. Nothing was bad, I guess, other than maybe Tyron Smith. Nothing was amazing. Everything was just fine. The defense is a little more different, though. We'll say that. Tracy Langham led the team with 119 tackles, 107 for Damian Thomas. Tackles for loss, we had a good amount. 22 for Chase Young, 16 for Wilkins and Greenberry, 13 for Pittman, and sacks, 10 for Chase Young, 7.5 for Christian Wilkins, 6.5 for Ben Greenberry. Honestly, our sacks were just fine. Daryl Rivers, 6 interceptions, led the team, 3 for Langham, 2 for Silvers, and then 1 for a couple players. So, <laughs> that was the most mid-stat season I have ever seen. There was nobody I could point to that was insanely good, nobody was insanely bad. It was just fine, which I feel like is kind of rare in simulation. But of course, a division rival in Dak Prescott wins MVP. A division rival in C.D. Lamb wins Offensive Player of the Year. They also have Alvin Kamara now. Oh, God. Defensive Player of the Year goes to division rival Demarcus Lawrence. Do I need to explain my theory? I don't think I need to. If you've seen one of these, you know my theory. <laughs> Chase Young at number four. Offensive Rookie of the Year does go to Adrian Vaughn. Okay, that is not who I thought it would be, <laughs> if anyone. Eli Neal at number two for the Eagles, and then four guys in a row, or three, three non-commanders, and then two more at the bottom. So about half our players, not exactly, but close enough. And Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Dar Darrell Rivers. I'll call, I don't know, Darrell Rivers, sure. Not a big surprise there. Langham at number two. Langham, I thought, had a chance. Green Greenberry at five, Thomas at six. So again, about half our players, I guess only four. I was hoping for more standout performances, honestly, but I'm okay that there weren't because we got a few good dev traits. So <laughs> Vaughn at running back has superstar X factor. Hopefully he can keep developing. Sawyer at receiver has X factor, which I'm assuming is why he couldn't go up in dev trait, obviously. So it just gave him 10,000 XP. I didn't know it did that. That's something. Fig Pen at guard has superstar star dev and then on defense a lot of superstar x factors here and one superstar greenberry rivers which isn't surprising i kind of expected those two but batch also not super surprising but i honestly didn't think he would have it but langham i did not expect to have x factor that is interesting so he should become very good i hope and then even damian thomas has superstar dev so our defense could be insane by the end of this our offense still could but springs only has star i wish he had a better dev trait. I mean, Star isn't bad, but if I see like an insane quarterback this year, I might take the chance. I mean, Springs was good as a rookie. He was, yeah, he was good, but I want to go for a great QB. So if we can make that happen, cool. If not, that's probably fine. But yeah, a good amount of X factors. So I'm happy about that. And oh yeah, I almost forgot we are in the playoffs. Bijan Robinson had 1,800 rushing yards. Wait, he didn't even win offensive player of the year. What did CD Lamb do? Huh? 1,700 yards, 14 touchdowns. I mean, that's a very, very, very good year, obviously. How did Bijan not win it? He didn't have many receiving yards, but still, interesting. <laughs> Anyways, we have a first of many scenario here. We will go play it cool, y'all know me. I don't expect to win this game, though. It is the Atlanta Falcons, and they are busted in this game, so let's simulate it out, and we'll see what happens. Although we do have the Cowboys defensive playbook, so we do win 28 to 17. So in just year one, we already get a playoff win, but we have a recap for the first of many. Give us those sweet, juicy staff points, and we have a play playoff rivals scenario because we're going to be taking on the Cowboys and you know we don't deserve to win this. I, I kind of hope we don't win this and hope hopefully we can do well when we have an actually really good team but I guess I won't complain with a win even though we're three overall 
lower and they're at home. We'll see what happens. Okay, we lose. 27-21. The, the rare time I'm happy about a loss. So let's get into the offseason. And already, <laughs> we could be looking at an insane team. I don't want to go too overboard with free agency, but we could. We could. But the Chiefs win another Super Bowl? I don't know if they won the one against the Cowboys. I can't remember. 38-24 to over the Panthers. Ooh, and we got some upgrades. I mean, are we sure this isn't just Darrell Revis? I mean, you could literally spell Darrell Revis with the letters in his name, just with an extra R. Like, I, I'm shocked I didn't make that connection. <laughs> I thought of Darrell Revis when I said Darrell, but I didn't make the connection with how close their last names are. I We maybe drafted Darrell Revis, I don't know. And we have two upgrades for Adrian Vaughn. I wish we won Rookies of the Year with players who didn't already have X Factor, but it is what it is. I definitely didn't expect Vaughn to win Rookie of the Year at running back. Oh, and I was gonna say I don't think I'm gonna resign anyone, but I can't if I wanted to. We have negative 30 mil in cap. Okay, <laughs> I guess that's for all the draft picks we have. So, unless I can massively restructure some deals, I think we're just getting into the draft. We'll see. Okay, but in the draft, I don't know what I want to do. I wanted a quarterback, but the quarterbacks don't look very good. The best looking one is Evan Trankel. I hate that last name. It shows up way more than it should. Uh, well, before I show his, his combine, his ratings are good. Literally all of them. The only thing lower than a B is his trucking, which is kind of surprising because look at his ratings. This is one of the best athletes at quarterback of all time, and he's only the second fastest in the class? I tried to look for who the fastest is. Uh, there just isn't one faster. No, well, it could be a UDFA. Sometimes the UDFAs don't show up until you get into the draft. I don't know. Yeah, there, no, there just isn't a faster one, so I, I don't know what happened there. Unless it's Dakota. No, he only has good speed. I don't know. And well, he couldn't be the second fastest at the, or the fastest at the combine. He didn't go to the combine. I don't understand this game sometimes. Uh, we're not going to take Tranquil yet, but I think I'll take him because he could have a really good dev trait. I have no idea. And honestly, I kind of wanted a receiver, but none of the receivers at the top look all that good either. Pratt looks good. I'll probably take him soon, honestly. He's just not very fast. He's great acceleration, at least elite jumping, but he's just not very fast. I think our pick is going to be at number two because I think I'm going to trade this one down. Now, it's hard to trade down because we have so many draft picks and <laughs> the game counts your cap space before you even spend and sign the players that you pick, which is weird. I wish it didn't do that. And even when you trade the draft picks away, it doesn't help your cap situation. It's weird. Honestly, I guess we can't trade this away because I can have any draft pick I want for free, pretty much. I would only want to trade for players, and we can't trade for players. So I <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to do. We'll just spend it. The player I like, who we don't need at all, but looks really good, is Jose Quinton. Actually, am I lying? Is he... I I think he's the one I like. There's also Darren Dixon, who is very similar. What's even the difference between these two? <laughs> I guess Quinton has some, you know, elite traits like jumping and acceleration. Darren's a little faster, but not by much. Darren Dixon. I don't know why I called him by his first name. Whatever. <laughs> I don't know. This could be an absolute throw pick. Maybe he sucks. He looks good. Don't know what to do with this pick. Jose Quinton, welcome to the team. Hidden dev, 84 strength, 83 speed, 90 acceleration. Sounds good. Can't go wrong there. Ooh, and let's see. Are there any, like, crazy looking corners? Maybe a generational one? No. Josh Stockton looks good. What's his speed? I'm not going to take him yet. Ooh. His acceleration isn't great. It's only solid. He looks good. Probably like a 77. Generational safety check? Could be good. Eh, no. <laughs> okay, I'm officially at a loss for who to take. Nobody at the top here looks that good. And it's all the same three positions over and over. Edge, receiver, and quarterback. And I guess tackle. We do need a tackle, but none of them look that good. Zach McConnell looks good, but not number two overall good. Let's just take a receiver. I mean, I mean, why not? Let's just start throwing picks in the trash because we can. Ken Casey doesn't look good. Could surprise me. Hidden Dev at least. 96 agility. Sure. 1930s ass haircut, but sure. Ooh, I definitely want to take Jerron Collins eventually. We're gonna have so many receivers actually. Maybe, maybe I should have just gone Pratt first because I think he's better. I mean, we're gonna have to do something with these picks, so I might just go with all three of them. I, I don't know. <laughs> Let's go with Will Coles. Maybe weird to take him top five. I don't know. We have most of the picks this year anyways. Uh, elite jumping, change of direction, agility, and acceleration. Good speed and strength. Sounds good. <laughs> His power isn't the best, but everything else is pretty good, so I, I don't normally like taking tackles. Guards are always better, but Coles looks good. Of course he would have normal dev. A super athlete? Yeah, why, why would he be able to have upside and develop quickly? That's cool. This is something I just randomly thought of, but there should be a development trait is cool. I don't know if this would overcomplicate things, and maybe it would, but it would be cool 
if there was an upside trait too? Ooh, that would be kind of cool, wait. And just give it to like good athletes because you know, they generally have more upside than players with, you know, bad athleticism. I guess that's kind of how I think of straight up dev traits as being. I mean, that's not really what they're supposed to be. I just feel like dev traits are kind of weird. They would make more sense if there was also like a max upside or maybe not max, cause it's kind of lame to max players out or like cap them off at a certain level to where they can't get any better than a certain point. I don't know. That's something interesting to think about. Like, uh, like have two hiddens, one for how quickly they develop and one for their upside. I don't know. That's interesting. That might be kind of cool. Now that I think about it, I don't know what the point of that would be because I don't know, you would have to change how dev traits work and make it so they can get to that upside really quickly if they play well, which would, I, I don't know. You know what? Let's go with a tight end, Ricky Patton. His uh, short route kind of sucks and he's not the best blocker, but look at that combine. <laughs> Another really good athlete. Can't wait for him to have normal dev. No, he is hidden. 89 speed, 90 excel, 88 agility for a tight end. Oh, he's only 6'6", 235. Damn. He's basically, he's basically a receiver, a slightly oversized receiver. Interesting. We just took Kyle Pitts, I guess. Probably not as good, but I don't know. Also one glaring difference there. I was going to take a defensive tackle for the last pick I'm going to show, but again, none of them look that good. <laughs> Jarvis Parker actually looks really good, but I'm going to take him later. His pursuit isn't very good, but everything else is. How big is he? Only 301? He looks really good. All right. Well, I don't know if I just suck at drafting or probably, but, or if this is like a just terrible draft class, but I'm having a hard time finding good players. Trent Hayes looks good. I don't know. <laughs> See, he ran a 4.36 and a 4.29, which is amazing, like insane. He's gonna have like 94 speed and 94 excel, which is good, but not as good as it should be. And his ratings are maybe questionable. I mean, we can assume he has B man, cause you know, he's a man to man corner and he has B zone. So you would assume his man's at least as good as his zone. I don't know. I also don't know what his awareness is, but hopefully the speed's good. Normal dev. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> A 4.36 and a 4.29 apparently means 93 speed. Really? That's so lame. I hate how that works. But I'll make the rest of these picks and I will see y'all for the draft recap. Okay, yeah, I was I was definitely right in thinking this was not a very good draft class. It, it wasn't. <laughs> we got pretty much all of the best players and none of them are all that good. I mean, Aaron Tucker's really good at an 80 overall. 84 zone coverage as a rookie. It's just, you know, 71 man. That's not great. It looks like Darren Dixon was the better player between him and Jose Quinton, but like by two overall, I'm fine with that. Maybe he has a really good dev trait. I don't know. Yeah, and Dixon and Tucker were the two best players in the class. We we got pretty much the rest of them. I missed Andrew Montgomery. Oh, well. Like there were some other all right players, but not, not that good of players anyways. So it's like, eh. Will Coles was a big miss. He sucks. He's a 73. That's tough. Kevin Pratt's at least a 78. He's good. I mean, yeah, there are a few good players in here, but but they're, they're few and far between. And I did end up taking Evan Trankel, who has 95 speed, 91 throw power, 94 change of direction. This dude's crazy looking. And this might be controversial, but I think we're gonna start him. I know our quarterback last year was good, but I want another shot at offensive rookie of the year. And Trankel could have a very good dev trait. So we'll start him. If he sucks, we'll go back to the other guy. I don't know. I'm, I'm intrigued by the speed. I think he's the more fun player by a long shot. We still have that third quarterback we need to trade. <laughs> we'll see what we can do there. But let's get into year three and we will see how the team's looking. But we are going to send Fowler, our, I guess, second first round, key, or I guess our first first round QB from last year, to the Lions for their first round pick. Uh, maybe too much value. This isn't a realistic rebuild. I don't care. It went through. We'll take it. But here's a look at the team heading into year three. Like I said, we're going to try Trankle at QB. I hate his last name. I, I want to change it. Whatever. <laughs> We'll keep it. But I mean, we have a pretty good situation set up for him here. No like insane receiver, but Sawyer could be by the end of the year. I'm also like half tempted to start one of these rookie tight ends or move Pratt over to tight end because he would be, I think, an 81 over there. Yeah, an 81. But Chad Irons is such a cool name. Like we can't replace that. And he is superstar dev. So I don't know. We'll see if Pratt has a dev trait better or like a superstar or superstar X factor, we'll move him to tight end once that that's revealed. And this defense uh, is insane. <laughs> Again, just look at the dev traits. Six X factors. Chase Young got X factor apparently. And I guess we can maybe even have one more. I mean, we have what? Seven new hidden devs on defense. So you never know. Now that I said that, they're all going to be star, but I guess they could be X factor.
here. I don't know. It's weird to have only X factors, no no superstars on defense, no no piss dev traits, only on offense. But let's get to the midseason point of year three, and we'll see how we're doing. Okay, well we are four and three at the midseason point. Surprisingly, the Cowboys are struggling. I don't know if I've ever seen that, except for when I use them. They're two and five. We're coming off of a loss to the Giants, unfortunately, who are the leaders of the division. We would have been if we beat them, but oh well. We're once again kind of mid in terms of yards. We have a good scoring offense, but it's probably going to regress. I don't know. This is kind of a weird year so far. I don't honestly think we're going to make the playoffs, but I predicted that earlier and we did, so I don't know. I guess you never know. Anyone important to re-sign? Uh, it doesn't matter. We have negative 33 mil in cap. Okay, cool. Uh... <laughs> I guess that's what we get for having every first round pick. We can't sign any free agents. But let's get to the end of the year. Actually, I kind of want to check if we have any dev traits revealed. I'm sure our quarterbacks can have star, but how about the rest of the team? Ooh, okay. Casey has X Factor. That's kind of crazy. So we have two X Factor receivers. I don't know about any of these guys yet. And then none on defense have been revealed. Even Parker? He's literally 22 snaps away from getting his dev trait revealed. All right, whatever. So unless Tranquil plays really well and wins rookie of the year, we might be drafting another quarterback, which isn't great. But honestly, the quarterback classes haven't been very good. Sometimes I see like four 80 plus overall quarterbacks in one class, which is unrealistic, which I won't get into that. But it looks like this is a strong quarterback class. So if our guy doesn't do well, we're probably going to draft another one. <laughs> so let's get to the end of the year and we will see what happens. Wow, that was like the quickest simulation ever. But we unfortunately finish eight and nine. Our offense actually didn't get too much worse in terms of points per game our defense just wasn't that good though especially our pass d which you know should be the strength of our team with two 90 plus overall pass rushers a 94 overall corner pretty decent corners other than him two great safeties like that should be the absolute strength of our team but it <laughs> of course it's not and wow we are getting a ton of x factors jarvis parker also has x factor why <laughs> why can't i get this luck in my regular rebuilds but these are going to be some interesting stats I, we could win Offensive Rookie of the Year with Tranquil. I don't know. Okay, yeah, we we will win Rookie of the Year with Tranquil. Uh, 3,900 yards, 36 touchdowns, only seven picks, 70% completion percentage. He was very, very good. So we're not drafting another QB, thankfully. Adrian Vaughn did better than last year. Almost 1,200 yards, still only 3.9 yards per carry, which isn't very good, but nine touchdowns. He's, he's getting better. He's improving. What's his overall? 80, 88? And he's only 22 years old still. Randall Sawyer led the team with almost 1,200 yards and 16 touchdowns. Casey 960 yards, 7 touchdowns. Rodgers was decent. Our blocking was actually really good though, surprisingly. How many total sacks is that? Like 20, 29? I mean, what's even average for sacks allowed in a season? I, I have no idea. <laughs> like in real life, I mean. But Tracy Langham led the team with 122 tackles, 104 for Damian Thomas. Tackles for loss a lot, again. Jarvis Parker had 19 tackles for loss but zero sacks that's that's different uh <laughs> and then sacks ten and a half for chase young and ben greenberry five for wilkins and then that's about it in interceptions three for darrell rivers two for aaron tucker cal batch and andrew woodard and then one for a few players so uh, that was a good amount of picks too how was this not a playoff team there was literally nothing we were bad at <laughs> i guess just we allowed a lot of yards <laughs> we must have allowed a ridiculous amount of yards with that amount of interceptions to make up for it and it was still terrible? Were we just allowing like 20 yard chunk plays every time they tried to pass and then sometimes getting picks? How does that happen? What? That's interesting. But MVP goes to Patrick Mahomes, Mac Jones at number three, Tranquil at number seven as a rookie. Offensive player of the year goes to Bijan Robinson, which maybe now that he'll actually get used in Atlanta, hopefully. Randall Sawyer at number seven. Defensive player of the year goes to Daniil Hunter, Chase Young at number three. I don't know why I'm spazzing out like that. Sorry. Evan Tranquil wins Offensive Rookie of the Year, Ken Casey at number two, Ricky Patton at number nine. I think he was our number, I thought he was our number three tight end, but I guess he must have been number two. So we do get Rookie of the Year with our QB, and Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to J.D. Blackburn for the Panthers, Parker at five, Tucker at six. What did Tucker even do? He had a couple picks, right? Yeah, two picks, three tackles for lost 61 tackles. Interesting. I kind of forgot he existed for some reason. Like, I, I have zero recollection of taking him. I don't know why. But let's get into the offseason. 
We'll see what the rest of our dev traits are. We'll see if we have any other crazy ones. But in the Super Bowl, the Panthers beat the Bills 28-24. I thought we had escaped the Panthers' dominance in Madden Simulation, but they're back for some reason here. They used to win like every Super Bowl. Okay, Pratt <laughs> also has X Factor. Cool. We'll move him to tight end. I mean, I guess that, that kind of makes sense with every first round pick pretty much or as many as I can get to get a lot of X factors. It's still weird to see all that on one team though. And let's see any others. Stockton also has X factor. He's already 24 unfortunately, but wow, this is just a team of X factors pretty much. Tranquil did get superstar though and a couple upgrades, so that's huge. So now I focus scouted QB for no reason cuz I honestly didn't think he would do very well. Hmm. Should I start Pratt at receiver? I guess I could over Rodgers and just leave Irons at tight end. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But now we're going to be on to probably the last draft of the rebuild, and I don't know what we're going to draft. I mean, maybe corner, but we'll see. I don't know if I'm able to get any draft picks this year. That's the problem, because <laughs> we are very, 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 very broke. But of course, we have a few players to re-sign, including Tyron Smith, but we can't bring him back, which sucks. I don't think there's any way for me to free up money. It seems like sometimes you can restructure rookie deals, but sometimes you can't. I Oh, we can here. It doesn't save much, but it saves a little bit. I guess we'll see how many of these we can restructure. I guess it depends on what year their deal they're in. I don't know. I don't think it's possible for us to get out of like 40 mil with 540k restructures every time, but I might as well try. All right. Well, I tried. I <laughs> still negative 22 mil in cap, which it showed we had like negative nine. I don't know how that works. So we're going to need to tackle. That's for sure. And we'll see what we can do in the draft. Hopefully, hopefully we can get a tackle. All right. Well, to at least try to keep the theme of the rebuild a little bit, even though I like cannot get the first round picks with the way I was getting them, which was just moving the team's best player to punter, trading for that player, and then trading them back at their original position for like their first round pick for the next two years. I can't do that anymore because we have negative cap, but I just traded our entire next year's draft pretty much for the number one pick. I don't know what we're going to do with this pick, but you know, we at least needed the number one pick. Larry Whitworth looks good. His strength isn't that good though. I mean, it's good, which I've seen like 35 reps be decent, so I, I understand less and less every day how the combine numbers work. I know they're a little random, but that's that's stupid. He also doesn't have the best power in the world. Is he worth taking at number one? There's Troy Dawkins. What's his speed? 441. Good ratings. I don't think he's insane, but I think he's good. He'll probably be around an 80, maybe like a 78 to an 80. Ooh, Justin Randall looks insane. I mean, not as good of a combine as Dawkins, but what's he? Li he's listed as a man to man corner too. Ooh. How about Riddick? He looks ridiculous too. That's I'm funny. I don't know who the best corner is here, honestly. It's also weird he's a man-to-man -man corner, but only B-man, A-zone. I guess maybe the press has something to do with it. I don't know. And the speed. Dawkins is two years younger than Randall, too. I mean, Randall could be a better overall, but let's go with Troy Dawkins out of Clemson. Hidden dev, 92 speed, 95 change of direction, 92 excel. Sounds good. We'll take it. Should I try to trade up for number two, too? <laughs> Our cap is going even more downhill. I don't know if we can get this one. I'm going to be honest. Oh, no, I don't want to trade that. Okay, we're getting number two for our entire 2028 class in a second this year. I am going to take a chance on that tackle. He looks all right. Let me look if there's a better one later. Skylar Fox. That's a porn star name. Straight up. Skylar Fox. That's crazy. I would be willing to bet so much money that there's someone with that name. You know what I'm saying? Ooh. Okay, Andrew Way could be kind of crazy. I might go with him later in Brandon Lockhart. Okay, I kind of want both of them. But Larry Whitworth, we'll take him. I don't think he's great, but I think he's good. Maybe like a 76. I don't know. It's hard to say. I don't draft tackles that often. I'd normally just go with guards or centers, but let's take him. Hidden Dev, 88 strength, 83 excel. He's fast, which I guess we knew. Might be decent. We'll see. And let's see. There's nothing I'm overlooking here, right? Like we're we're good with everything else, I think. Ben Blake looks good from what I can see. I don't know if I want to take him because we have like 20 pass rushers, but he looks good. You know what? Hold on. Where are the guards supposed to go? They're both third to fourth round. Uh, I don't know if I want to risk one going. We'll just take him here. It's a reach, but I don't care. Andrew Way, elite strength, 40 bench reps. 40 was only fourth for right guards. What? 41 was first. Are they actually going to be here? Okay, are those are those right guards in the room with us here? Like, they just don't exist. When they get taken, when players with a better number get taken, it raises 
blows the other players up so they didn't already get taken. They just don't exist, apparently. I don't know. <laughs> we'll go with Andrew Way, sure. Hidden Dev, 92 strength, cool. I saw someone named Theo Pounds. That's a fire name. There was also a first round QB. Did he get taken? Yeah. But Brandon Lockhart, 41 bench reps, elite strength and speed and change of direction. I can't speak. Let's take him. Hidden Dev, 93 strength, 75 speed, 82 excel. Damn. Also, elite change of direction is 58. That's tough. But let's get to the end of the draft. I might make one more pick. We'll see. But I guess it's not a first round pick. So I don't know if I can take it. I don't know. Whatever. Who cares at this point? Let's get to the end of the draft. Uh, okay. Pretty good draft here. <laughs> Troy Dawkins, which is, I guess, another great defensive back name. I mean, I don't think he's going to be similar to Brian Dawkins with 69 hit power. Nice. But also on a rival team. So a little bit cursed. But 79 overall. I said he was a 78 to an 80. He is right in between. So pretty good guess there. 82 zone, 79 man, 79 press. Looks good. Was really well rounded. I mean, yeah, he's a 79 across the board for man slot and zone. So yeah, pretty well rounded. Larry Whitworth is a 77. He's going to start for us at, I guess, left tackle. I don't, I don't usually love starting rookie tackles because they usually play absolutely terribly, but we'll see what happens. He's good though. Andrew Way is a 77. He's really good too. Not a scheme fit, but hidden dev, good overall, and probably the best value pick of the draft, someone that wasn't even supposed to go until the third or fourth round, Brandon Lockhart, 82 overall with hidden dev. I feel like this rebuild's gonna make me better at drafting because I'm gonna remember to look for guards like this more often. It seems like there's usually one in the third-ish round that ends up just being insane, which I don't know why. Most of the good guards in real life are first-round picks, aren't they? Like Joel Batonio, I think, was a first-round pick or second round, whatever. Zach Martin was a first round pick. I don't know. That's interesting. I don't know why that's a thing, but we'll take it. And then the last pick I made, Bernard Boykin, he's fine. I mean, that's good value probably. I don't think we needed another safety, but I don't know what we needed to be fair with the last pick, but very strong draft class, pretty much all offensive line. So let's get into the final year of this rebuild and hopefully we can do well. I have my doubts, but... <laughs> We'll see. Oh my God. I try not to call out comments. YouTube loves to give me notifications for the most brain dead comments I get. I guess it just gives notifications for longer ones. I, that's my guess. I don't know. So in the Seahawks rebuild I did, I mistakenly said the Seahawks haven't had a playoff win in the last seven years, which I thought some, or I thought I heard someone say, but I must have mistaken them saying one playoff win in the last seven years, which I corrected in my video. I put the fucking bright green text at the top of the screen that said, or one in the last seven years, my mistake, or whatever I said, I don't know. And someone in the comments is like, God, what did it even say? I don't know. Like, why are you lying for clicks? I can't even find it now. Oh yeah, it says, hasn't, in quotes, hasn't won a playoff game in seven years, but actually not really, because I need clicks for clout. How the fuck does me saying something in the video get me clicks for clout? And no, it was a mistake. I corrected it. You're a fucking idiot. Like, being a dickhead for no reason is one thing, but being a dickhead and being stupid is another. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just on edge because I get... A, I get so many notifications for stupid shit that people say. <laughs> it is unbelievable. You know how a bangle calls out like comments on Twitter and just posts them with like no other context, pretty much? I want to start doing that because I get arguably more brain dead comments with a smaller sample size. So I, I, I don't know how that's possible. But here's a look at the team heading into the final year of the rebuild. Our offense is only an 84 overall, which I guess makes sense. We really don't have that many players that are better than an, 80, than an 84, so. I'm surprised it is even an 84, but it should develop throughout the year. I mean, offense is almost entirely dev traits and is very young. I moved Pratt back to receiver. He'll be our number three. And then on defense, it's like all X factors. <laughs> so, you know, pretty good. I will say, I hope our defense actually plays well, unlike last year. Uh, you know, I have Dan Quinn here, obviously. So we went with the Cowboys defensive playbook, but I don't know. I don't want to change it for that reason, but it, it hasn't been great. I think one year it was actually pretty decent. I don't know. Let's Let's get to the end of the year and we will see how we finish this rebuild off. Can't wait to finish eight and nine and miss the playoffs probably. Okay, well, before I reveal how we did in year number four, if you haven't already, be sure to drop a like on the video. I think I said 3,500 likes and I'll do another zero overall rebuild because y'all seem to enjoy them. This team is kind of cracked though. 89 overall, 88 offense and a 91 defense. And we did develop a lot throughout the year. I mean, morale helps too, but we also just straight up developed 
developed. I think our best player that we drafted is Darrell Rivers. He is very, very good. 96 overall up to a 98 with morale. He's crazy. 98 speed now, almost 99 man, 99 with morale. But yeah, be sure to like the video if you've made it all the way here because, you know, clearly you've enjoyed it a little bit. I would appreciate it. And subscribe for more because literally all my rebuilds are like this. So if you liked this one, you'll like all the rest of them, hopefully. <laughs> Maybe not. And of course, let me know any fun rebuild ideas y'all have down below. But as for the dev traits this year, Whitworth only had star. Lockhart had superstar, which is nice. That's the best dev trait for a lineman. Well, actually, I've drafted X factors, which is weird because it doesn't do anything. Maybe they fix that now. I don't know. Dawkins also has superstar. And then I think that was it. But in year number four, we finished 11 and six. So a great way to end off this rebuild. I wanted to go longer with this team, but honestly, it's going to start falling apart because we are so broke and we can't even get any more first round picks really because again, we are so broke. But hey, good way to end off anyways. Evan Tranquil, 3,700 yards, 29 touchdowns, seven picks. Not as good as last year, not nearly as good, but still good. I guess close-ish to as good. Adrian Vaughn did turn into a good player, which is very rare for a drafted running back. I don't think I've literally ever had that happen. But almost 1,300 yards, 4.2 per carry, nine touchdowns will take it. Up to a 92 overall at still only 23 years old. I mean, at a 92, he should probably be doing better than what, 4.2 yards per carry, but that's still good. It's good enough. Randall Sawyer, 1,000 yards, 11 touchdowns. He's been really good. I think he's close to a 90. Yeah, an 89 overall. I'm kind of surprised we didn't get a better receiver though. I mean, there are some insane ones a lot of the time, like 82, 83 overall as a rookie, but we we still had good ones. Ken Casey, almost 1,000 yards. Pratt was okay. Iron, Irons was okay. The blocking was decent. I benched Andrew Way at the midseason because he was kind of ass. And Cody Hobart or whatever did very well at center. And then on the defensive side of the ball, Tracy Langham, 111 tackles, 107 for Damian Thomas. Tackles for loss, 21 from Wilkins. I think that's what he had last year. Or no, I think it was Chase Young that had 21. I don't remember. <laughs> tackles, or er, sacks, 13 and a half for Christian Wilkins, nine and a half for Greenberry, nine for Chase Young, four for Jarvis Parker. That's four better than he had last year. And interceptions, ooh, five for Darrell Rivers, which is very good. Three for Andrew Woodard, which is very good, or good at least. One for Troy Dawkins, and that is it. So nine total picks on the year. Not, not the worst, but I was hoping hoping for better. And MVP goes to Joe Burrow. Jared Goff back on the Rams here. I feel like that happens a lot. No Tranquil up there this year. Offensive player of the year goes to Cooper Cup, which is interesting. The white boy Cooper Cup, might I add. Gotta bring that back. Defensive player of the year goes to Christian Wilkins. That's kind of surprising. He was really good. I didn't think 13 and a half sacks would be defensive player of the year good, but we'll take it. So that was definitely a good signing. Offensive rookie of the year goes to Matt Elliott for the Seahawks. And defensive rookie of the year goes to Corey North for the Saints. Saints. Troy Dawkins at number 10. Yeah, we had all linemen on offense pretty much, and then our one defensive rookie at least made it up there, so that's cool. And we are coming off of a 45-22 to win against the Seahawks. Scorigami? Question mark? I don't know. That's kind of a weird score. It's probably happened before, though. But we are going to be taking on the only 9-8, and 84 overall New York Giants. Should I force win this playoff <laughs> situation, or would that be lame? I feel like some people would complain about it, but like, we are 5 overall better, and at home. I guess it's possible that we could technically lose this game, but it shouldn't be likely that we should that we will lose this game, and I feel like it is likely. I don't know. I'm not going to force win it because that's lame, I guess, but the Giants are pretty good in simulation a lot of the time. It looks like they had a shit offense, though, so I don't know. They had a really good defense. We had literally the best scoring defense in the league this year, though. Still not the best pass D, but at least mid. And you know what? I'll check where we rank in the league in terms of overall, so I can have more ammunition to complain when we lose this game. Okay, we are literally the best team in the league by two overall. Oh boy, this is going to be a catastrophic loss. So let's simulate it out and we... <laughs> This will be fun. Yeah. <laughs> At least I knew. I knew what was going to happen. What did I just click? Manage team? No. Maybe I should have force winded it. I don't know. That's oh, that's lame. I mean, maybe the outcome is more lame, but I don't know. We built literally the best roster in the league, as I would hope, having every first round pick for two years in a row, or at least as many as we could get. But this was a definitely very good team. A very fun rebuild, a very fun result, and possibly the most interesting team I've ever built just because of the dev traits, like all X factors, pretty much, which is cool. 
cool. Not as many on offense, but at least all of our weapons other than Chad Irons all had X Factor, so that's cool. And I guess the O-line doesn't count because they can't get X Factor. I guess the superstars are pretty much like X Factors for the O-line, so three of them. Anyways, I'm just rambling at this point. I hope y'all enjoyed today's video. This was a very fun one. Again, 3,500 likes for another one of these. I could even do this exact one again if you would want to see that. Just let me know in the comments. But again, subscribe for more. Trying to hit 40k in the next week or so. Trying to hit 50k by the end of the month. I appreciate y'all a ton. Thank you all so much for watching. And with that, I will see y'all again in the next video. Goodbye.